You know, I, I think for me, and, and I think for a lot of Stephen King fans, like, the, the reason that Stephen King is Stephen King is because of his character, not because of his scares. I mean, I think that he's obviously a very um, master of horror and a master of, of thrills, but at the same time, I think, like, he's been elevating, elevating the genre for 50 years. And, and I think what is sort of all of us who work under the umbrella of King, and I see so many horror horror writers, great horror writers now are working as an umbrella, is that you lead the character, you try to understand why it is that you should be afraid of people that you are going to be afraid for first, and then you start uh, putting them in situations that are scary, and so I think for me, I mean, even thinking about the canon, you think about things as buried as the body to the Shawshank, like, those are fundamentally emotional stories, they're not fundamentally scary stories, and I think that's the kind of magic of Stephen is that he, he is really a character writer first, and I think a horror writer um, next, and, and that combination is what he yeah, yeah. Nor misery either. Misery is not a supernatural story. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I think in season one, we sort of, I think, showed like, the audience that not everything is normal in Castle Rock. And so the idea was, you know, I think there could be a season in Castle Rock that had no supernatural element to it, but I haven't met that season yet. Um, and so I think that, that for me, that part of what I love about Stephen's work, too, is that often you'll start with a story that seems cute, sort of very um, terrestrial, and then it will turn into a very different kind of story. The stand is kind of down there. You know, it's like it starts as, as an outbreak novel and then it transitions into something very different. And I think that seems like part of the exciting challenge of the as we really ground the audience in obviously very serious human themes in the beginning and hopefully entertain and make them laugh along the way. But then at some point in the season take a, a turn into a genre element that I hope sort of resonates thematically with the character in the beginning. You know what's amazing is, uh, during at least season one, people were so um, exhausted in their covering of Easter eggs that often they would discover Easter eggs that I didn't know about. And so, yeah, in that, because part of what's been fun about Council Rock is that the crew, you know, it's, you know, we shoot in Massachusetts, a lot of the crew are New Englanders who have deep attachments to the and so they throw those kind of references into everything. I mean, and, and so, sometimes to an extent where in the editing room I will see them and I'll be like, this seems like a lot of Stephen King Easter eggs. But, so, I mean, there, there's some amazing videos online that I've seen where people have kind of like even Easter eggs that I didn't know. There's a lot of different reactions to You know, I suppose that when you are uh, doing a second season that is fundamentally about a, 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 a super fan who has a lot of opinions about the work, um, there must be some sort of subconscious connection. Um, certainly, and by the way, that's why Stephen wrote Misery was for exactly that reason. And, you know, I think that part of what um, my experience of season one and season two is that, like, is, is that in season one there were things that people really liked, there were things that some people didn't like about the ending and all those things. And like, to me, I think that I'm always kind of okay with that because I also have, I, I, I sort of um, take a, like, well, we did our best approach to it and we'll continue to try to do our best approach. And so I think, and, and I think, look, as a fan myself, I like certain things more than other things or like certain episodes more than other episodes of TV. And like, that's, I think living with that is, is sort of part of, like, part of the job, I guess. <laughs> Anybody from season one season two? So, Part of the original intention was always to um, plant seeds, and in the way that Stephen has characters pop back 
Adopt and Unexpected Place for characters to do stuff at all. And now, again, like, some people saw the very, very end of season one with Jackie and the, and the sort of little post credit tag, and we're like, oh, they're going right to the Overwatch. So we're not going right to the Overwatch. So, but the question is when, the question is how, the question is what unexpected way will you see her again? We, obviously, everybody wants to know will you ever see Bill again? Like, and, and, and I think that, that part of what um, I, I will say is just that we always had the intention of circling back, just maybe not in the way that people necessarily do. With that approach, the anthology sort of approach, how far out do you have a grand plan? Like how far out do you know where it's going? Have a grand yeah, I mean, to me, there's sort of two ends of the spectrum in that question. There's, there, and honestly, and I think it's going to be a good thing, there's the J.K. Rowling end of the spectrum, and then there's the Stephen Dupree yeah. spectrum. And I would say that Castle Rock falls somewhere in the middle of those two, which is to say, it's not like I know, honestly, what the last shot of season eight of Castle Rock is. I don't. But... I know what the plan is, and I know what we are seeing about the universe, and I know kind of how some of these characters fit into the tapestry of that universe, and at a sort of season level, or multi-season level, where we're going next. So many of these are kind of found in this game. I don't know if you have any of these check questions or how did you watch with them, but there's just so much going on as well to say that from season two. I mean, absolutely. And also, the truth is that because Steven's universe has been so widely adapted, it's not like I can just take every character I want either. Sometimes there's that there's that question too. Um, I think the, the biggest thing for us, though, because we do have so many iconic characters and stories, was how do we sort of narrow down which one we're going to do? And that and that really is a big a big big question for us. That is sort of a constant a constant struggle, which is like, do we introduce this character in a small way in this season, or do we wait and build an entire season? So that that is a really good question. Thinking about like how, we, how we approach each of them. You guys are going to have to wrap up. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.